Welcome to Ground Control. This is the Esheen and Adam RC Seal Wing G1500 1.5 meter wingspan FPV glider. And this is courtesy of Banggood. I want to thank Banggood for sending this for review. You can use this in two different configurations. You can use it as a 1.5 meter wingspan and it comes with wing extensions to get it to 1.5 meter or you can leave out the wing extensions and use it as a 1.1 meter wingspan. Okay, so USPS delivered this. They did as, as much damage to the, to the box that came in as they could possibly do to damage the plane. I did end up with a little bit of damage to the plane, but nothing that I can't correct and fix in order to assemble this plane. First, I wanted to go over the features of the plane. I wanted to go over how the plane assembles, some of the features of the plane. I want to start with the airframe and then I will move on to the electronic components. Okay, so it has a it has a length of 950 millimeters. It is made out of EPO foam. It comes in uh, three different versions, a kit, plug and fly, and an FPV plug and fly. I have the plug and fly version. For the test parameters, they used a 4S, uh, 4,500 milliamp hour LiPo. It says for 1.5 meter configuration, which is what they used for testing it. A recommended takeoff weight of 1,100 grams, a maximum takeoff weight of 1,400 grams. It has a cruise speed of 50 kilometers per hour. It has a cruise current of 4.1 amps has a flight time up to 60 minutes so your total travel for your one hour flight at 50 kilometers per hour is going to be 50 kilometers right okay so it has detachable wings i'm happy about that it makes it a lot easier for me to transport it has an adam rc branded 2212 1400 kv motor it comes with an apc style composite 8x4 prop the recommended battery for it is a 4S 3000 milliamp hour LiPo and it comes with four 9 gram digital servos. I'm glad the servos are digital and not analog. So the aircraft is assembled it says and the electronic equipment is not assembled. So I will show you what that means when I pull out the electronic components. I was. It, I think that using the term plug and fly for this plane is a little bit of a stretch. And I'll show you why when we go over the electronics of the plane. But first I wanted to go over some of the features of the plane. And I've already got the decals applied to mine. I find it's a lot easier to apply the decals before you assemble the plane. One of the things that they broke on my plane was the latch tab on the top of the latch that you depress to get the hatch off of it. So I've got this hex wrench here to depress that so I can get the canopy off. As you can see, it has plenty of room for a very large LiPo. Comes with the battery strap. Battery strap was not installed, so you have to install the battery strap. It comes with a little plywood plate on the back with a pinhole in it for, uh, for securing the hatch, like that. And some of the stuff they put on here I think is very well thought out. Okay, so it has foam panels that you can actually pull out of it. And so this full foam panel sets on top of a plywood shelf. It has a cutout at the back for your cables. And this is designed to house your GPS unit. So if you want, you know, a flight controller with a GPS unit for return to home, setting up waypoints for your flight, etc., it's there. Uh, it comes with another foam cutout in the front for an FPV camera and it also has an access hole in the back to bring the FPV camera cables through. So that is, that's pretty cool. They really thought a lot of this out. On the side panel, which is a magnetic hatch, pull this open, you've got tons of room in here for your equipment. Okay, so it's designed to have the flight controller installed on the flat bottom part of the fuselage. You have another plywood panel up here to mount your video transmitter and it has an access hole through the uh, plywood panel 
so that you can bring your antenna outside the fuselage and away from the electronic equipment. So they really thought a lot of this out. It comes with two different sets of carbon spars. You have your main carbon spar and your auxiliary carbon spar. You know, this goes in the front, this goes in the back. It just slides completely through the fuselage. The, uh, the wing extensions and the main wings just slide over it. If you want to, to configure it as a 1.1 meter wingspan FPV glider, then it comes with two smaller uh, wing spars that you can use for that. It comes with three different wood motor mounts. Two of them appear to be identical. I think that some of the things that they include in the kit, they also included spares in the plug and fly version because I have two identical wood uh, motor mounts and then I have one larger one. And then I also noticed that on the tail skid, the little plastic cover for the tail skid, I had two of them in the box. And then the, the plywood the plywood end plates for the main wings, uh, I already have two that are glued onto it. If you get the kit, you have to glue these on yourselves, and, the, and two of these were in the kit. So I assume that they just included some items from the kit in with the plug and fly version. And then you also have another skid plate uh, that goes under the, the bottom of the fuselage for doing belly landing. What they've done with securing the wings I really like. It makes it a lot easier to attach and remove the wings the way they've, they've set up their, uh, their method for securing the main wing. And if you put, so all you have to do if you want to, if you want to use it as 1.5 meter, which is what I'm going to do, you just slide your wings over the carbon spars and then using a number two hex wrench, it has a hex head screws in there that tighten down and secure the outside wings onto the main carbon spar so that the wings are not going to move. That makes it really easy to get to rather than having to fiddle with, with nuts inside the fuselage. It makes it really easy to attach and secure the wings and then uh, detach the wings and take them off. So I really like that. It come, the, the tail boom and the vertical stabilizer are separate. It also comes with a carbon spar and an access channel that your um, servo cables will, will come through because you, you're going to mount one of the servos on the vertical stabilizer for the rudder. Everything is car, all the control surfaces are carbon reinforced, including the elevator and the ailerons. I think that these wing extensions are going to make, make a very nice uh, flaps that I will install in it later. It also comes with the horizontal stabilizer, which will glue onto the bottom of the tail section before you attach the tail section to the main wing. So one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your servos are centered, your servos are pre are installed before you glue any of this together because you're going to want to bring all of your cables through the bottom side of this tail section to get it into the fuselage to connect to your receiver before you glue everything together. So you want to install your servos first. Okay? It also comes with a separate canopy as a platform for a camera, GoPro, any type of action camera if you wanted to. I mean you could also install your FPV camera up here instead of in the cutout in the nose. The plywood shelf is not glued into it. I don't understand why but they didn't pre-glue the plywood shelf into it. And they did not pre-glue your, um, your latch receptacle into the back of it. So those two pieces of plywood need to be glued into the auxiliary canopy that you get for an FPV camera. They also managed to um, bend my horizontal stabilizer a little bit in the shipping and, and broke out the carbon spar on mine. So I'm going to have to glue that back together. Those were the two minor issues with damage to the plane that I suffered from the shipping company, but they're pretty minor and they're easy fixes. So Okay, so let's go over more of the assembly on this plane. I'm not going to be gluing everything together on camera, but I do want to go over um, how the assembly, how this plane goes together so you won't have any problems assembling this plane. 
Uh, it does come with this little, it's a real basic manual. Um, it goes, it has enough information in it that, you know, if you've assembled a plane before, you shouldn't have too many problems. But uh, one thing it doesn't talk about, at least I didn't see it, is CG on the plane. So when I throw this in the air the first time, I'm going to be taking the, the th one third of the root cord back from the leading edge of the wing, and that's what I'm going to go with on my CG. Oh, as a matter of fact, I have a little nub right here where they have the CG located. So I'll measure that and see how far that off, how far that is off from 30% uh, of the root cord. Uh, I just now noticed that. They didn't have any of that in the information. So the CG is marked on the bottom of the wing. Also, all the patrol horns are all pre-installed. And of course it comes with the it comes with all of the um, control linkage and these use ball links. So I thought that was kind of nice, and they're threaded, so they're mechanically adjustable. You can adjust the length of the control rod. One of the other things on the back of the on the back of the main uh, fuselage here, you know, you've got your plate already installed to attach your 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 motor with the with the wood mount. To there are screws that are included for that. There are screws that are included. They've got this little cubby hole back here. And this is designed to house the ESC that they sent with the plug and fly plane. And then it has a little plywood cover that goes over that. And they did include, there's three holes, two on the top, and one on the bottom. So they did include screws to secure that as well. So the ESC will be mounted in this little cubby hole. And then there's an access hole cut out here where you can bring the ESC wires through. Now I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use the included ESC or if I'm going to use something different. It also comes with um, Velcro for your LiPo and what else? I think that's it. I think I've pretty much covered everything on the airframe. Here's my other little spare um, plastic cover that goes over the goes over the uh, little skid on the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer. So I, I ended up with a spare one of those. Okay, so anyway, what I'm going to do with the carbon spar, doesn't say anything about gluing the carbon spar into the tail section, but I'm going to glue the carbon spar into the tail section uh, before I run my wires through uh, for my servos. I'm going to install my servos, run my wires through, and then, um, and then attach my servo to the horizontal stabilizer. It has, it has channels already cut and the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer and the bottom of the wings for embedding the wires from all of your servos. So first install your servos. And I'm going to install the carbon spar. I'm going to glue it in. Okay, and then after I've run my wires through the access channel at the back of the fuselage, then I am going to go ahead and glue the carbon spar into the back of the fuselage, glue the mating surfaces of the fuselage together. That's after I've already glued my horizontal stabilizer on, okay? So, it's, it's a very, very simple build. And since I'm going to be using it as a 1.5 meter plane, I'm going to install my long um, wing spars. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tail section off before I before I lose it. Okay, and then the small diameter auxiliary or secondary wing spar. And you may have to open up the access panel here. Sometimes it's hard with the little spar because it's a little flexible to meet the hole on the other side. So just take off the access panel so that you can see it on the inside. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, so so we're going to get our, our spars pushed through our fuselage. All right, and, then, and these are symmetrical. It doesn't. I don't think it matters which side you put these on. I've, I've held them up. Uh, with each other. I've, I've checked to make sure that they're completely square on the bottom so I don't see that it's going to make any difference whatsoever 
which side you start with. Okay, so just run, you know, run those through. Run those through the the wing extension and then grab your main wing. And then both of those will slide over. There's already there's already carbon tubes that are already embedded in the wing. Positions on these yet, but I will, you know, before I go through the actual assembly of it and start putting everything together. I always like to measure the the center position on the wing spars, you know, on each side of the fuselage, so I know exactly how much of it should be embedded in each wing, so each wing has the same amount of support from the wing spars. So don't forget to do that, you know, measure it first. I just knock off the table the tail. Alright, there. It's kind of hard to get those in. I mean, they fit nice and tight inside those wings. Okay, so, you know, once the wings are attached, all you've got to do is run down the, the hex heads to, to you know, tighten up on the main wing spar and your wings are done. Okay, now let me go get my tail that I just knocked off the table. Isn't this great how this how these how this goes sometimes on camera, you know? Let me kind of show you what the whole thing looks like here. Okay? So there is what the complete assembled fuselage is going to look like, or our airframe is going to look like. Okay, so we've talked about the airframe. We have gone over the, the assembly process of the airframe, and I've given you some tips on the assembly. So now let's talk about all the electronic components. So when I read that the electronic compo components are not assembled, I assume they meant the electronic components were not installed in the airframe. They really meant that the electronic components were not assembled. Okay, so I spoke about the 2212-1400KV Atom RC branded motor. It has a hollow shaft and you have pre tend wires on the three wires for the motor no connectors are included. You have a naked ESC, meaning it doesn't have any wires or anything attached to it. Okay, this is the 30 amp speed controller that's included. So you are expected to solder all the wires onto the ESC. It is not pre-soldered. It is not ready to go. Now if I have time I will go ahead and solder everything up and get this 30 amp speed controller ready to go. If I do not have time to do that, I will put 3.5 millimeter connectors on the motor, but I may opt to use one of the uh, 30 amp speed controller that has all the connectors on it ready to go. It just depends on how much time I have available. Okay, and you get your mount screws for your motor and two different lock prop lock nuts you get the 8x4 prop that I spoke of APC style um, composite prop and a pack of six spacers for your prop now on the ESC you get a servo connector and wires that are pre tinned to solder onto your ESC and I will I will post a, a picture of a close-up of this on the screen so you can see what it looks like. But um, all the pads are marked. You have a plus and minus for the two pads, one pad on each side of it, 
for your power cables and they did include the power cables and the power cables are not trimmed and they're not pre tinned so you will need to do that. It has the pads marked for the servo connector to go to your receiver and they have the pads marked as voltage or current uh, signal and ground and then you have the three pads for your motor. Now it looks to me since no connectors were included for the motor, there were no pigtails with connectors to solder onto the ESC, it looks to me like the intention was to, to wire the, uh, the motor wires directly to the pads on the ESC. I am not going to do that. I am going to, to uh, fabricate some leads with 3.5 millimeter female connectors on it. I'm going to put male 3.5 millimeter connectors on the motor so that if anything ever happens and I need to replace the motor or I need to replace the ESC or if I just need to change the direction the motor spins very quickly and very easily, having three leads coming off of this with 3.5 millimeter bullets and putting 3.5 millimeter bullets on the motor will make it much simpler, easier, quicker. So that is the way I am going to do it. They also sent an XT60 connector, but like I said, you, and you don't get any heat shrink either. So I do not like leaving these posts exposed, even though you've got this wire separator that snaps onto the bottom of it. I prefer to put heat shrink over those exposed terminals, just to be on the safe side. You also have pads on here for 5 volt output. Yeah, you have two tiny pads in the front that have 5, five volt out. So they also included a pigtail. You're using a flight controller with a built in receiver that uses something like SBUS. Then you could use this in place of the servo cable because it does have three connecting wires. So. That may be its primary purpose is to take the place of this. If you have an SBUS receiver with a micro connector on it, you can, you can use this pigtail. You'll also notice that the four servos, two servos have short cables, two servos have long cables, and then you have two fairly long servo extension cables. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the servos that have the short cables and I'm going to install those in the horizontal stabilizer for the elevator and the vertical stabilizer for the rudder and <coughs> excuse me I'm going to use the servo extension cables to get these cables from the rudder and the, and the elevator all the way into the back of the fuselage I'm not going to glue the, this connect, these connectors together, but what I always do when I've got it, when I've got servo extension cables in an area that I'm not going to be able to get to in the future very easily, I take some nice high quality uh, vinyl tape and I, I tape those connectors together so that there's no chance that they're going to pull apart or vibrate apart during flight or during landings. And then the servos with the long cables are going to go uh, on the wing for the ailerons because those are long enough, even with the 1.5 meter uh, wingspan configuration, to make it uh, into the fuselage with some, enough slack left over that you'll be able to connect to your receiver and have your receiver, you know, installed in you know several different areas of the fuselage without having to worry about the cables not being long enough. So that actually is assembly of the electronic components are required for the plug and play version of this plane. That was kind of a head scratcher for me. I'd never seen that before, but it is what it is. So I wanted to make you guys aware of that. So to go over the assembly on this again, the steps that I would take on the assembly, apply the decals. Center up your servos. Make sure that your control arms, when you put, go ahead and once you get your servos centered up, put your control arms on so that your control arms are 90 degrees offset from the servo. If they're not 90 degrees offset from the servo, after you install your control arms, then use a little sub trim to get everything centered up nice and perpendicular. Then install your servos 
in your horizontal stabilizer, your wings for your ailerons, your uh, vertical stabilizer for your rudder. Once the glue sets up on your servos, go ahead and connect your control linkage. Mechanically adjust your control linkage so that your control surfaces are completely neutral. Okay, so once that's done, then go ahead and glue the horizontal stabilizer to the vertical stabilizer, making sure that you've got your servo extension cables connected to your rudder and your elevator servos. Get those taped together, run those through the channel on your, uh, uh, the, the wire channels on your horizontal and vertical stabilizer. Glue your, uh, uh, your uh, carbon spar into the tail boom. Run your servo cables through the tail boom. Glue the other end of the spar and the mating surface of the um, tail boom into the fuselage. Make sure all your wires are pulled through. Once all that is set up, then I would go ahead and install the motor install the ESC, get your receiver in there, any other electronics like your flight controller, your, your VTX, your FPV camera, whatever else, what other electronics you're going to install in the airframe. Once everything else is set up, then go ahead and install your, your wings and then plug everything into your receiver and program your receiver for your first flight. That's the steps that I would take for the entire assembly, just as a guide, I think that would be the, that's the easiest way for me to be able to do it and have everything you know set up and working properly from the get go. So uh, once I get this in the air and get a couple of test flights on it, and I get any adjustments made to the control surfaces that I need, I will go ahead and publish my I will go ahead and publish my setup file and my OpenTX model file on this plane. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm going to try to get everything assembled and ready to go and hopefully in just a handful of days I'll have this plane up in the air. So I hope that helps you guys on the assembly um, and getting everything, getting all the electronics you know, soldered together, configured and ready to go for its first test flight. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.